uh, just waiting for people to join. If you want to just say hi, if you're picking up the sound and the picture, that would be great. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I just want to make sure this is streaming okay before I get underway. I'm going to be talking about the tool bag. And if anyone can just say, can you hear me? And have you got a picture? As I've just been trying to get these settings and I'm not certain if I've got this yet or not. Hello, Edward. Hi. Are you getting sound and picture okay? Oh, great. Picture and sound working. Excellent. Thank you. I've had to rebuild this laptop with new battery and, oh, it's a terrible job. And then I had to rewire my internet connection. So I'm hoping this works. <laughs> anyway, good to have you joining us. Hello, Slap Bulkhead. Hello, Robin. Bobbin. <laughs> uh, hello, Ole. Yeah, great. Thanks. That's good. Um, yeah, continuing the tool bag. So this is the one where I popped up previous little live streams of the plans. And if you remember, there was also the paper mock-up. Well, I thought I'd just have a little chat about some of the sort of constructional order of this tool bag. So this is it. I've actually got it looking vaguely like a tool bag. So those are the wet molded ends that I talked about in the last live stream. And I've just at the moment pegged them on loosely. And the reason I've done that, I wanted just to check that my main bit of leather that wraps around was long enough and all okay. It was actually an inch too long, so I just trimmed it off. So I'd rather have it an inch too long than too short. It's a little bit variable depending on how you mould your ends. So I've made it a little bit more generous on the plan. So that's all fine. And what I've been doing is also marking where the handles are going to go and the back flap. So it's gonna have a canvas lid on this tool box or tool bag. And so I've got a little strip of leather, sewed down, bit of canvas, and I'll be riveting it on. And then it'll have handles coming up, but that will keep things inside dry and it's not too heavy. So that's why I'm using 15 ounce canvas. So um, just a couple of things to really to say about the canvas. I mean, things like this leather strip, and when I come to stick the ends of the bag on, I'm going to be using an impact adhesive. Now, I know if you're in the US, you can use things like barge cement. Uh, barge cement isn't so easy to get hold of in the UK. I personally use Evo stick. So you can get it in a tin or you can get it as a tube. And I find it great for general level work. Uh, it's a bit messy. So what I personally do is I decant it from a tin into a little spare tub and I use a little spatula and you just coat it on each surface, let it dry. It's just like barge. And then you press them together, hammer them together and you get, it sets really nice that so you work on it and get stitching or get whatever you need to do with it. So that's all quite helpful. Um, so yeah, I think it's, thanks for comments about the bag. I think it's coming along. What I really wanted to relay in this little live feed was the fact that I haven't glued the ends on because what I'm going to do is construct as much of the bag in its flat unfolded state. And then when I've got all the handles on the top flap and the pockets inside, I will then uh, do the ends. But it's important with bag construction to actually think through the order in which you're making things. So I have made pockets to go inside the bag. So these again, 15 ounce canvas, little pockets, and they'll take a phone or a tool or a tape measure or whatever. So I've got those each side and they'll sit inside the bag. I've got the canvas roof going on it. <laughs> and so I can fix all of these on before I actually sew up the ends. And then I've been making straps to go over the bag. So little um, buckle and strap, which I will again rivet on while the bag is flat. So I'm going to be doing everything I can while the bag is flat. Now, something I did want to show you was I'm going to be using the copper saddler's rivets because these are lovely and strong to fix the handles on. So what I will be doing, I've got my holes 
quite low down so I can have the flap of the lid coming over. So these will get riveted on. But what I'm doing, those rivets, as well as the handles, on the inside, they will actually hold the pockets in position. Because on the inside, I'll have this like leather washer. And when I rivet those handles on, the rivets will come through this and they'll hold these pockets against the inside wall of the bag. The idea of this leather washer, it will spread the load with the rivets. So the rivet will come through, I'll put a washer on, hammer it down on the inside, and this leather, if I didn't have it, the rivet would probably you know, rip through the canvas in time. But having the leather washer like that, it's a double washer, two rivets, it will actually hold it and keep the handles lovely and firm. And when I make a tote bag, I use this construction. So the rivet basically goes through the strap, the handle strap, through the bag wall, and then through here, riveted on. And I find it's really, really a good method. It's really strong. If you're using these, the solid copper, saddler's copper rivets, if you're using these, they really do work a treat. Uh, hi, so hi Antonio and Johnny. Uh, good, better looking at the length, yeah. Um, hello Edward, <laughs> actually caught us this time on the live stream and it's working. Uh, good, coming through just fine, that's great. Pleased about that because I'm using a laptop because it's very hard to look at comments on the phone and also you get a lot of flickering with the phone. So I've got a camera attached to a laptop and um, you get a better picture generally, so I'm hoping it, it works, but it is technically a bit complicated and I'm still learning, to be honest. Uh, so yes, so with the bag, got the pockets for the inside, they'll be held largely by the handle rivets. I will probably need to put a little rivet in the top corner each side, keep them like upright, but I think that will do that. If you're wondering how I'm getting these little crease lines, so can you see on the straps? You've got these little um, like coach lines, they're called saddler's crease lines. I'm using this saddler's crease tool. And the idea with this is you heat up the blade under a little um, burner lamp and then you can go along and you get this nice little decorative line, which also sort of firms up the edge a little bit as well. But it's quite a nice little sort of decorative detail, a bit of fun. So I've got those and ditto on the main straps as well. You can see them there, the handle straps. And I've just sunk my little logo in as well. A bit of fun again. That's the saddler's crease lines. The sewing thread I'm using, I'm going to, you could obviously hand stitch all of this very happily. I'm putting it through a machine and I'm using European scale, it's NM15 thread. In the US, I think the equivalent for that is a 138. But that's what I'm using. I'm making it quite a bright red to stand out. It's a bit of fun. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I'm using, on the handles, I felt that they would probably stain quite quickly. It's obviously natural veg tan. So what I've done, I've put a bit of surface treatment on them and I'm using tokenol. So I find this a very good burnishing agent. Hopefully that's focusing. I think it is. Yeah, it's um, quite expensive, but it does last a long time. So you can get it off the likes of eBay, um, depending on which part of the world you live in. I think it comes from Japan and it's made or oh, sold by Siwa, who do quite a few nice quality leather tools. S-E-I-W-A, because I probably pronounced that wrong. Siwa, S-E-I-W-A. It's called Tokenol. So I think you can see that there. And a friend put me onto this. I've been using it actually on wallets as well. But what's quite nice, if you have a natural veg tan and it's very rough and hairy on the inside, you can just rub a bit of tokenol over and it smooths it all down nicely. But it also sort of seals the leather, does the edges nicely. So for the handles, that's what I'm doing. For the body, I'm going to let it just age naturally and that will get a lovely like a suntan with age and use and it'll get scars and knocks i mean end of the day it's a tool bag so it doesn't really matter but it will go that color so here let me show you that's the the natural russet leather as it is now as it gets exposed to sunlight and everything it'll go just like this axe cover 
and it'll go this lovely dark sort of mellow colour which is rather nice. I have debated whether I do some pictures on this, it is very tempting <laughs> so I may get carried away and do some pictures. But yeah the main thing I really just wanted to sort of pass tonight is the order of construction. So the key thing being get everything made that you can on the flat body first. So I'm going to rivet the cover, I'm going to rivet on the handles before I glue the ends on and then sew the ends on. So it's far easier to do it when it's laid out flat and I can do the interior pockets obviously as I do the handles and then I'll do the ends last of all. That's absolutely key and that's the case really with any bag making, do think of the order and normally try and do most of the stuff while the bag's open and accessible so you can get your hammer in for the riveting, you can get your cutters in for trimming and what have you, it helps. Hi Marlene, uh, North Dakota, it's quite a nice <laughs> part of the world, goodness me. Um, John Dave Lynn, uh, what about the sides of the pockets? <clears throat> so the pockets, the way I've done them, it's left canvas bent over so they're forming literally pockets and they're just going to get pinned behind the handles they're quite stiff so I think they'll hold up but as I say if they don't I'll put a little bit of it in the top corner so in fact they're hanging inside the tool bag but they are supported where these handle rivets go through I'm just looking in the other comments <laughs> David, no pressure, but my dog is watching too. I love it. <laughs> if my cat was here, he'd be saying, yeah, hello to you. Um, yeah, Edward, thanks. Um, definitely have been thinking this one through to make sure this bag is going to last. And it should see me out, I think, quite happily, which is, in a way, it's quite a nice thought. Pass it on to someone else. But there you are. So that's the plan with the bag. I've got some little brass buckles I've been popping on the straps. So what I'll be doing, as I say next, is attaching everything to the flat sheet and then I'll do another live stream to show you before I glue the ends on as to what's going on. But certainly if you're in the UK and having trouble finding contact adhesive, this is actually, I think the Euro stick's pretty good. If you use it with a little spatula, decant it and have a spatula, it's far easier, less smelly than if you just try it out the tin when it's a bit big for leather work. And yeah, this token all I find very good for finishing off edges and things. So I hope that sort of helps a bit. Um, and in the UK, we are all still in lockdown. Every Thursday evening at eight o'clock, we have um, clapping for the National Health Service. So in a minute, I'm going to be going out into the street. Uh, along with the other neighbours, all keeping a safe distance from each other and we'll clap for people who are working not only in the NHS but in the care sector really to say it's a clap of thanks which is a nice thing because there are a lot of people uh, and actually it goes beyond the care sectors because it's all our delivery drivers, all the people running our shops, all, all the people basically who are doing key work to keep everything going so a big thank you to everyone. Um, Thanks Derek, nice comment there about me vids and yep, keeping okay at the moment, still in lockdown and will be I think for quite some time. I hope you're keeping okay and uh, managing to get on with a few things, it's a very odd time. We've formed a WhatsApp group in my road so my wife and I set that up and it's been really good and in fact one of the things I just did today was I popped some leather um, mystery braids around the street, well I had people collect them and um, they've been making up mystery braids at a distance remotely. <laughs> I gave them instruction over video for that. But it's quite good fun to try one or two things for the community where one can. Anyway, I will be back um, and I'll show you the bag as it progresses. And in the meantime, take safe and try and enjoy yourselves in these very odd, difficult times. Okay then, bye-bye. <laughs>